such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is the odd case of Tammy Lynn Leppert. Now, this girl was destined to be a star, but it was just unfortunate that the most attention she got was because of her disappearance. Now, there are some very odd circumstances leading up to her disappearance, and many don't even know what to think about it today. By the way, I just want to thank you guys so much for all of the support on my last video of David Michael Kruger. I added so many of my own personal insight, personal knowledge and experiences in that video and I was very scared to publish it because people can be really mean on the internet. However, you guys were extremely nice and welcoming of the information and you really you really listened and you really cared what I was talking about and it really meant the world to me so I just want to give you a quick thank you and for anyone who is watching who is not yet subscribed I just do want to let you know that I post content like this all the time and the community that we have here is, in my opinion, one of the kindest and best on YouTube. And I would really, really love it if you would join us. But let's get back to the story. So it was 1983 in Florida and Tammy Lynn LaPert was an 18 year old living her dream. You see, she had always wanted to be an actress and she had told her family that that wasn't because she wanted to be famous. She just loved playing pretend and the act of actually acting and by the age of four she was already participating in beauty pageants that her mother had put her in and by the age of 16 she had won 280 of them which is an amazing percentage considering that she had participated in 300 so only 20 were ones she had actually lost. Now she was stunning, but she also had an absolute heart of gold even when she was younger. It was said by the Unfound podcast that in one of these pageants that she was participating in, the announcer actually called the wrong name for the winner and they called this other little girl and this other little girl was so excited. However, she hadn't won. Tammy had. And when Tammy heard about this, she did not throw a fit, did not ask for the crown. She actually said that it was only fair that that little girl got the crown, got the title, because they called her name. So she wanted to give her the crown instead. And it just kind of shows you how incredible of a person she was on the inside as well, even though people often wanted to just look at her for her looks. After participating in so many pageants over the years, Tammy decided she was going to also get into modeling. It was just something that kind of was a progression of what she'd already been doing, and she actually actually landed a photo in CoverGirl in October of 1978 and by then she was really wanting to go further into what she was truly passionate about and that was acting and so by 1983 she actually landed a minor role in the movie Spring Break and it wasn't huge but it was said that her body, her legs and her torso were the main focus of the movie poster and you can't see the girl's face, I'll insert it here, but you can see her body. It was like the main focus and that was said to be Tammy's body. Now when filming for this was finished, she decided that she wanted to go to a party. It was a weekend long party and she decided to just kind of let off some steam and to party with everybody, have some fun before going back to working. However, when she would come home from this party, she would be extremely different and her behaviors were very odd and she went home to her mother and her family friend who was named Wing, who was like a boy that was younger than her that lived with him at the time and she kind of started expressing these strange behaviors and she wouldn't tell either of them what had happened. She wouldn't really go into depth as to why she was acting different. She just isolated herself in her bedroom, wouldn't leave the house, wouldn't eat off of her own plate because she believed she was being poisoned. She would only eat off of other people's plates. She then saw a van in the neighbor's driveway and she asked Wing, have you seen this van? And he said, yeah, the neighbor's got a new one. And she said, well, there's mirrored windows. That means that they can see us, but we can't see them. She would also not want anyone to answer the phone and say that she was there. She would make them say that she was not. Eventually, her mother demanded to know what was going on and Tammy said, 
What if I told you someone was trying to kill me and her mother said, do you think someone's trying to kill you? And Tammy responded with, yes. Tammy explained that she'd seen something so horrible, but she wouldn't go into detail about what that was or why it scared her so incredibly much and why she was paranoid about it. Then after two weeks of her being in the home with no longer being able to really get into her head and figure out what was going on, she was actually accepted into a role in a huge movie. It had Al Pacino in it and it was called Scarface. And she actually accepted this role when it was offered to her. And that would mean that she would be filming in Miami, which was not too far away from her home, but she would have to stay with a family friend that lived there. And you can actually see her in the movie in a blue bathing suit leaning over the car. But many on set, they were so blown away by her. She was the type of woman that could walk into a room and everybody turn their heads and it was natural. She didn't try to be this sort of outstanding, stunning woman. It was just how she was naturally. And she even got a little speaking role in the movie you could kind of hear what she was saying however it wasn't a huge line or anything but this was more respected in the industry and of course she was paid more for it and everything was going extremely well however on the fourth day of filming they were filming a scene where there would be blood there would kind of be a murder on the scene or at least a death I couldn't I'd never watched the movie but there was fake blood and it was a very gruesome scene and when Tammy saw this, she freaked out. What many believe was a PTSD flashback, she just started screaming and crying and had to be escorted to a trailer to get her to calm down, but nothing they said would do so. They couldn't stop her from panicking, they couldn't get her to calm down, so eventually they had to call her family friend that she was living with to come and get her, and when he did, he walked in and she was crying and saying that someone was going to kill her, and she couldn't form complete thoughts or sentences and she couldn't tell him exactly what was going on but she was just in a very scared state of mind. But this would be the end of Tammy on the Scarface set because she needed help and she needed to go home to get that and everybody could see how much she needed that so she would go home to her mother and they were going to try to find out if this was a legitimate concern or if this was some sort of paranoia going on in her mind, possibly another mental condition that was undiagnosed so far. The police were called when Tammy got home, except she didn't express any of her concerns to them. She didn't talk to them about anything to do with her panic attacks or her paranoia. She just kind of omitted that anything like that was happening, and so they left. However, when they left, the fear was still there. She wouldn't leave the house. She would just isolate herself to her bedroom. But on July 2nd, she would step outside of her home and to, I don't even know what she was doing. It wasn't really specified. She just kind of wanted to look around, possibly to see if she could see anybody watching her, you know, if she was still in that mindset. And the door was closed by the wind and it locked automatically behind her. And she began to panic like never before. It was pure chaos. She began to scream and beat on the door to let her in. And that is when she noticed a bat in the yard and she couldn't get in the house. And the only thing she thought to do was to take this bat and to smash the front window in where it was completely open where she would, could get inside from the window and when she got inside she was still in this chaotic state and her mother was trying to calm her down and she said she that Tammy did not look like her daughter anymore and that she couldn't get her to calm down she continued to say I love you I love you please calm down and it took her several minutes to do so and after that incident they knew that they needed to take her to a mental health center to get her some serious help and once they were there, the mental health center did several tests on her to see if possibly she was on drugs or substance abuse of some sort. And they would find nothing in her system, which was extremely strange. They thought they would at least find a little bit of something, but nothing at all could be traced. Now, while in this mental health facility, she would not express any of this behavior that she had shown at home. And in fact, she appeared really normal. So after the mandatory 72 hours where they have to keep a patient to make sure they're okay, Tammy was released because they couldn't keep her when she wasn't showing any signs. So after this, that night of her release, she would meet up with a close friend named 
Rick Adams and she would express to him how scared she really was. They were extremely close. She felt really comfortable. Rick offered to help and wanted to take her to a temple where she could pray and just kind of feel like she was in a safe environment. Tammy was still on edge but told Rick that she loved him so very much except for the next thing she would say would be very concerning. She would be saying that she was going to be leaving town for a while but she wanted him to know that she appreciated him and Rick just thought that this meant she was going back to acting, that she was going to California like she had planned and didn't really think too much of it because they had also made a plan to meet up the next day and so he just thought that everything was going to be okay. She, he'd see her the next day. However, when he called the next day, she was already gone. And he says even to this day that he doesn't believe she would have been drinking or into any drugs. She really, she didn't drink at all and she wasn't the type of person that would have used drugs. So it was the next day and like I said, Rick had called and she was already gone and that was because it was July 16th and Tammy wasn't just going to stay in her home as she had been and isolate herself inside. She was actually going to go to the beach with a friend named Keith Rogers who was a 20 year old male who picked her up at 11 a.m. from her home in Rockledge and she told her mother that she would be out for a little while. However, mother's intuition told her mother that that would be the last time that she would see Tammy and she would be right. When Tammy didn't return home, of course, the police were called and they went to talk to this friend of hers she had gone with named Keith and he had said that they had gotten about five miles driving from her home when she demanded to get out of the car. They had gotten in an argument. She wanted him to take her to Fort Lauderdale. He refused. He had given her $300 for whatever reason. I'm not sure if she, he owed her or she demanded it, but he did. And then he ended up dropping her off at the glass bank in Cocoa Beach because she wanted out of the car after this argument. And that is where he left her. He said this was the last time he saw her and the police then cleared him from this investigation saying that he had nothing to do with her disappearance and I'm not exactly sure why because her own mother was saying that normally Tammy was scared of Keith. Now the search for her began and she was a Caucasian female with blonde hair and hazel eyes standing between 5'4 to 5'5 and weighing about 115 pounds. At the time of her disappearance she was wearing a blue denim skirt, a light blue shirt and flower appliques on her shoulders and wearing flip-flops while carrying a gray purse. Now the purse is kind of a from one source to another, some say she was carrying it, some say she was not. But her mother says she didn't even brush her hair that morning, which was so unlike her. She always left the house very put together. However, she just kind of left without even combing her hair. When Tammy's friends were talked to, they said they believed she was actually running away from her own mother. Her mother was her own manager, which kind of explains a lot. And they said that she wanted to get away from her. However, Tammy had already planned to move out to California within a very small amount of time to work on her acting there. So it wouldn't be like she would have had to hang out with her mother much longer. Then it was found that Tammy had actually been in contact with somebody after Keith had dropped her off at this glass bank. And that was her aunt Ginger. Now her aunt Ginger lived nearby and owned a balloon addicts costume shop. And she was out of town at the time. However, Tammy had called her three times and left her messages and Ginger said that they were real, that she was very scared and that she believes that something was really happening, that Tammy really had someone to be afraid of. These calls are no longer available to listen to. They have been lost throughout the years, these messages. However, the police did get two calls to the department about Tammy. And these were from a woman saying that Tammy was alive, she was okay, and she would make contact with them when the time was right, that at this moment she was practicing to live out her dream of being a nurse. And this only made it worse because now the police were hearing another theory about Tammy just being a runaway. And so this added to their own theories and they were doing less and less to look for Tammy. Yet there was a serial killer that looked very suspicious because he had an MO that fit Tammy Lynn Lippert 
very, very closely. Now, his name was Christopher Bernard Wilder, and he was said to have killed eight to nine women. Now, he would travel between Florida and California, luring women in by posing as a photographer. He would go after these models saying that he wanted a session, and then he would kill them. And this was all done in the mid 1980s, which would be around the same time as Tammy's disappearance. And Christopher had been a monster ever since he was a teen. He was put on probation in 1980 for attempting sexual battery towards a teen. He pleaded guilty, which is why he got probation. And during this time, he went back to Australia where he was from, where he kidnapped and sexually assaulted two girls while being there. He was charged, but his parents bailed him out of jail and sent him back to the United States where he would stay until his trial in April of 1984, which would mean he would have still been in the US during Tammy's disappearance. When hearing about this possible serial killer that could have taken Tammy, Tammy's mother said that there was a guy who resembled Christopher who came into her offices prior to Tammy disappearing and he looked a lot like Christopher. And like I said, Tammy's mother was her manager, but she also had a whole modeling and talent agency, which is where she said this Christopher looking guy came in. However, she couldn't be 100% sure that it was him. Tammy's mother ended up filing a $1 million lawsuit against him, but eventually the charges were dropped by her because she really didn't believe that he was the one who had done anything to her daughter because it was basically a whole year later Later that he was said to have started his crime sprees. He killed nine women in the span of six weeks in 1984. It was so close in the amount of time that he did so before being caught and killed in a shootout that many believed he wouldn't have killed Tammy a year prior. However, he was already assaulting girls back then too, so I'm not sure that that's too far-fetched. He was known as the beauty queen killer, and if you want a full video about him, let me know and I would love to do so. But if it wasn't him, then who? There was another serial killer in the area who was said to have killed 30 women in Florida, and his name was John Crutchley. Now, he would kidnap and assault these women, and he was actually known as the vampire rapist because he was found guilty of kidnapping and then sexually assaulting women in Orlando, Florida before actually drinking half of their blood. Now, this was three years after Tammy's disappearance that he was doing so. However, at the time of her disappearance, John was actually working in Palm Bay, which was 30 minutes away from Cocoa Beach, where Tammy disappeared. John died in prison of suicide in 2002, and he was never linked to Tammy's case or Cleared. Now, the biggest theory in this case is that Tammy witnessed something at that party that she was not supposed to that led to her being threatened and somebody really wanted to keep her quiet. Now, some, including her mother, say that drug trafficking was huge at this time in this area and that they believe that that is what she witnessed and somebody really wanted to keep it quiet, that they were doing all these illegal things. Maybe they were someone high up, maybe they were an actor, maybe they were famous, maybe Maybe they couldn't have their reputation tainted. And this is something they did often, which is how they knew how to scare her, which caused her paranoia. And then maybe they eventually did what they said they would to her. Now, people in the area allegedly said they all knew about this large scale money laundering operation happening. And Tammy was said to even have filed a police report kind of about this, but her mother says she did so and the police say that she didn't and they don't have a file on it at all. Although could this point to the police being in on it, which is why they didn't really want to look into Tammy's disappearance? Or maybe Tammy witnessed a murder that night and that's why the set of Scarface when they were so much blood really did paralyze her and kind of make her have a flashback to that night. This would also mean that Tammy would know exactly what they were capable of doing if she'd already seen them murder somebody else. Or was this some other killer entirely that has never been caught? There was actually a woman who had disappeared a month prior to Tammy at Cocoa Beach and it was on June 6th of 1983 and her remains would actually be found the next year on March 8th and she would be identified as Nancy K. Brown. Now, like I said, this woman had gone missing a month prior and it was exactly a month prior. She was gone on June 6th and Tammy was gone on July 6th. This is something that a possible serial killer would do. Sometimes they do have patterns in when they kill. 
and this could be exactly a month so maybe every month they did so and another theory is that possibly tammy committed suicide that she just could not handle this paranoia that she was possibly suffering with some sort of mental health issue now her mother died in 1995 saying i want to shake them up i want the criminal to know they can't absorb my child or anyone's child without ultimately paying a penalty for it and now Tammy's sister actually speaks up for her and has done a lot in this case to try to get the information out there to find out what happened to her sister. She has a Facebook page and she also puts many other resources out on the internet to find and know more about the correct information so I do hope that I got it right and age progressions have been made of Tammy of what she would look like today but her case is unsolved, so if you have any information, please call the Cocoa Beach Police Department 407-868-3269 or 321-868-3251. But this case is absolutely heartbreaking. I think Tammy had such an incredible future ahead of her and that was taken so soon, so abruptly, and I just wanna know what happened. It's so mysterious and there's so many different ways that you could look at this case and i just hope that tammy didn't suffer is my ultimate hope for her but i'd love to hear what you think about it and don't ever forget to speak up your voice is powerful enough and i love you to absolute pieces okay bye